got home and was thinking about it, saying I didn't want to lose that love. I was sitting there, my sister, I'll never forget it, just like it happened yesterday. My sister was washing her hair up under the sink. Then all of a sudden, she just turned to me and looked. She said, Junior, you can't love her no more than you already do. And I don't know why she said it, but it triggered something on the inside of me. I started crying and I just couldn't stop crying. They thought something was wrong with me that I needed to go to the doctor. They called my mama, they called my daddy. My daddy got off work, came home just to see what was going on. I was sitting in the middle of the bed just to cry and rocking back and forth. Had a Bible that I had put on the bed and I'm just looking at the Bible. I don't normally tell nobody my experience that I went through, but I'm telling you, I don't know why God wants you to know, but I'm telling you right now, the Bible was right in front of me and all of a sudden the Lord was speaking to me. My daddy picked up the Bible, opened it up to Psalms 25, and the first verse in there said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. And when I read that verse, it was like the Lord was lifting me. He lifted the weight up off me. He unloosed my shackles. He broke down those strongholds. God knows how to speak. He knows how to speak. And a lot of times, it's an unexpected sound. Hey Amen. It's not always that he yelling. It's all not always that he got a holler. It's not always that he turn your life upside down. Sometimes it's just in a still voice that he will speak. Then I think I better bid you good evening. I bid you good morning. Because it's been good. I've enjoyed myself. I've had a good time, and I want you to know that it's been good just to be back in the service. It's been good just to be standing behind the sacred desk again. It feels good just to be standing in the pulpit again. Well, Moses had an unexpected sight. And Moses had an unexpected sound. But the last thing that I probably need to tell you is that there was an unexpected sanctuary. You see, God doesn't always have to bring us to church for us to be in the sanctuary. You see, Moses was on the backside of this mountain, and he was standing out there, and he had a whole flock of sheep, and he went and saw the bush that was burning and was not consumed. But then he heard the voice of the Lord, as the voice rang out and told him that Moses, Moses, take off your shoes, because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Well, let me tell you, when Moses was standing there, because the voice of the Lord was there. The presence of the Lord was there. The power of God was there. Then that was some holy ground. Moses was there and uh, Jephro was already a priest of Midian, uh, but Moses came down there and he met the real and true and living God on the backside of the mountain in front of a burning bush and Moses had a sanctuary where he sat there and was able uh, to talk to the Lord. Moses asked questions, uh, but God gave him the answers. Uh, and whenever you get into a sanctuary, God will be speaking to you uh, and God will give you the answers. Uh, I'm glad that I done had some experiences over in some unexpected sanctuaries. I've been riding in my car and uh, 
God has showed up and I done had a worship service and turned my car into a, a sanctuary. You done been in your house. You done been in the bathroom and you been sitting there and you started reading the word and the Lord showed up in the midst of and made your bathroom become a sanctuary. You done been laying in bed and you been reading the word and uh, the Lord spoke to you. Uh, your bed became a sanctuary. You done been in your den. You done been in your back room. You done been on the porch and uh, you done been on the patio. Uh, God showed up uh, and made it uh, a sanctuary. You done been in your cubicle. Uh, you done been on your job. You done been at your machine and uh, you done been at your desk. Uh, you done been doing your work. Uh, but God knows how to show up uh, and show up and make it uh, a sanctuary. When you got to praising him, uh, it became a sanctuary. When you got to worshiping him, uh, it became a sanctuary. You've been walking down the street uh, and God done showed up uh, and made it a sanctuary. You done been at your friend's house. You done been at a relative's house. You done been at a family reunion. You done been at a class meeting. You done been at a class reunion. And God showed up and made it a sanctuary. Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord, I can't help but uh, start praising the Lord. I heard David say uh, over in the 34th number of Psalm, uh, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, his praise shall continually uh, to be in my mouth. Uh, my soul uh, shall make his boast in the Lord. Uh, the humble shall hear of it uh, and be glad. And I want you to do it right along with me. Uh, as David says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt uh, his name together. Can I get somebody to praise the Lord in here? Do I have somebody that'll worship the Lord right now? Do I have somebody that'll give God glory? Do I have somebody that can say hallelujah? God been so good to me. Moses had a sanctuary, and while he was standing there, he had an encounter with the Lord, and it changed his life. And whenever you come into the sanctuary, it ought to, you ought to have an encounter, and it ought to change your life. I don't know about you, but every time I walk in, I tell the Lord, here I am, Lord. Do whatever it is that you want to do with me. I heard David said over in Psalm number one here, yeah, blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night, and the Bible says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his due season. Your leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. I heard David said over in the 23rd number of Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the old still waters. He restored my soul. He lead me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will feel no evil, cause God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He's anointing my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I heard David say, I believe it's around over in the 27th number of Psalms. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that which I seek after, that I would dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I tell you right now, God has a way to get us into the sanctuary. I thank God that I'm in the sanctuary. I thank God I can praise him in the morning. I can praise him in a noonday hour. I praise him in the midnight. God is, God is. God has been good enough. And the last thing I need to tell you right now, Dr. Harrison, when you look over in 121st number of Psalms, you might as well just say, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence coming my help. My help comes from the Lord. He's the one that made the heavens and the earth. And when God get through blessing you, you ought to just tell him when you recognize that it's the hand of the Lord that's on you, when you recognize that it's the spirit of the Lord that's moving in you, when you recognize it's the power of God that's leading you, the only thing you need to tell him here, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. sermon. <laughs> Let me make my ap apologies on behalf of a couple of us. I know we kind of been moving around, but when you're dealing with, pa Pastor Black, when you're dealing with technology and it goes out, the internet went out, and we tried to live stream, and so we was trying to get everything going, but um, thank you for the word, and thank you. A sanctuary any can be anywhere. Um, a lot of musicians had to leave. Um, like I said, we planned this on a, on a um, short turnaround, so we do thank God that they were able to come out today. Um, so we're getting ready to go. First of all, Pastor Black, we thank you again for coming down on such short notice. Sister Black, you, uh, um, um, I don't know. I, I work in the office. Evidently, I've been back there when you've been coming down here singing. This, is this your first time singing here? I, 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 well, I tell you, I won't be in the office anymore when I see you out here. <laughs> I'm telling you because, my God, I mean, I'm thinking like, the Rinda Clark or somebody, and I'm like, is this just on an album? You, I mean, your voice is powerful and it is meaningful, and, and I and I understand what you said, Pastor Black. It's kind of hard to follow, come behind that, <laughs> but thank you for the word. That's such a great combo, great coming. Sister Harrison, can you sing? <laughs> yes, she can. <laughs> Pastor Harrison says she can sing. Okay. Yeah, the house, you like me, when nobody can so low, nobody can hear me. Uh, but thank y'all so much again for coming out. Thank you, committee. Uh, Pastor Black, on behalf of the Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church, we'd like to give you this love, this token of appreciation for always coming out and, um, and um, being here and uh, being here for the pastor, being here for us. We, we consider you and your wife as, as one, of our, one of our members, you know. We're not trying to steal you from anywhere, but we, we appreciate all you do and you're always here. So on behalf of the Mount Island Mission Baptist Church, we give you this love, token of appreciation. Uh, Pastor Harrison, um, we did have for you, um, 
donations, I mean the uh, um, presentations. I have three here. I have from the Mount Olive Deacon and Motherboard. Also, I have from the General Church and also from um, my family and me. Again, anybody out there, if you are watching, you have not made your contributions, please remember. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, please remember if you would like to um, contribute, they're going to have the ways that you can do that. Um, did Reverend Smith want to say anything as a contribution? Reverend Smith, thank you so much, Reverend Smith, again, for being here. Okay. All right. At this time, we will turn it over to Pastor and Sister Harrison as they will um, have their remarks, and then we will end with Pastor Black coming to give the benediction, and then again, we will have a special video presentation for our honorees. Again, thank you, everyone, for the part you played today and under our pastor. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, sister. Before I turn it up, I don't want to call anyone out, but I do know there was one person that said if we couldn't get the pastor, she would uh, step in, and I didn't know not to not to do a message or anything, but I didn't know if she wanted to say anything. She knows who she is. I won't call her name, because she did say that God, that the pastor, God has really blessed her through the pastor, and I didn't know. And if she don't say anything, I, if she don't move, I won't move, but I won't call her name. Um, but I did want to yield to her because she was willing to she was willing to step in if Pastor Black couldn't make it. So you just waving your hand, sister. Okay, at this time, can we receive Pastor and Sister Harrison as they come forward? Good afternoon, everybody. It is good to be here. Sometimes we take for granted being able to come into the house of the Lord. And you don't realize just how much you miss it until you can't come in. Because this is my first time back since March. And it's, it's just good to be here and have a live pastor. You know, I, I haven't met home, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's different, you know. And when the house of the Lord do open back up, yeah. we should come running Amen. with our masks our hand sanitizer, our good etiquette, Amen. our spacing, and do what we need to do to stay healthy. Amen. I thank God for you all honoring my husband because when, okay, he said that me. <laughs> when I see y'all, you know, doing things for him and making him happy, it makes me happy. It really does. It, it does me a lot of good to see that you all care for him with everything that he does. Because I know sometimes he's tired, but he just keep on going. Just keep on going. And I thank God for you all all the time. Especially the media committee, you're really working hard. Because I definitely could not do it. 
I thank you all for everything that you do for us and for our family, not just today, but every day and every chance that you get. Thank you. Amen, Mother Harrison, you said it all. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, Mount Olive. Uh, I well, I know God was in a plan for you all to be able to do this in a week's notice. Uh, even though people let the word slip out that Pastor Black would be preaching this anniversary, I know it was supposed to be on a surprise. But um, it's hard to surprise a, tr a man of God. <laughs> God will reveal certain things to the man of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And um, Pastor Black, when you were talking about in your sermon, uh, things that you wanted to be when you was little, I was thinking I wanted to be an NBA player, basketball player as well. But for me to pastor, to preach, it wasn't in my plan, but like you said, it was all in God's plans. And some of you today, what you're doing in the ministry, you probably didn't see yourself doing it either. But it was all in God's plan. And there is no better place to be than in God's plan. Uh, Sister Black, uh, when you were singing that song, I thought about, I don't know if you're doing it, but it's time for you to start writing your own music, write your own songs. God, God has given you the gift to do that as well. Amen. And Mr. C, Deacon Collins, what an awesome job you d you have done today. Amen. MC, let's give him a hand. MC in this program, great job. So good to see Brother Hick Hickenbottom, Reverend Smith. Amen. Amen. Thank you all, uh, the oldest members of this church. Amen. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Everybody else who came, thank you all as well. Amen. Amen. The praise team, you all set the house on fire. God bless you. It's one thing to be watching virtually, but it's another thing to be in his presence. To actually be here is a big difference. Amen. Amen. Media team, once again, God bless you. I concur with my wife. I don't know how you all do it, but you all get it done. God bless you. To all of you who have blessed my wife and I and my family, uh, thank you all so much. You didn't have to do it, but I'm glad. We're glad that you did. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. I wish everybody could have been here, but we know we're in a global pandemic. And we have to, the church must go on. So I want to say thank you uh, for ha having uh, our pastor and first lady anniversary. Thank you for having our anniversary. Uh, when you all said you all would have it, I want to say God bless you. Uh, and d during this time, don't hesitate to call me. Uh, if you need me, call me. Uh, that's my job. That w that's what God has put me here to do, to pastor. So don't hesitate to give me a call. And also, um, I had preached a graveside service here on yesterday, and I want to say thank you once again to Mother Hockett and Deacon Hockett, who blessed me on yesterday for today. And also a thank you to um, Sister Siviet Harris, who blessed me on yesterday for today. And once again, to everybody who blessed us today, God bless you. I pray that he will bless you back a thousandfold on what you all have blessed us. May God bless you, and may he continue to keep you. Uh, Pastor Black, thank you once again for being here. What? And let's give Pastor Black a hand. An unexpected blessing. What an awesome sermon. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's just I've enjoyed myself for being here. I'm just glad that I was able to come be here with you. Mount Olive, as you honor, amen, your pastor and your first lady, amen. I'm just glad that I was able to be here to share with you and to just do what God had laid on my heart to give, amen. Look, I'm going to tell you like this. I, I, I tell you, I, I, Pastor and I, we always talk uh, about 
different sermon about passage of scripture when we get together all the time we talk about the passage of scripture what we see in them and all that but I always tell him look dog, if you preach it because he'll preach it better than I can <laughs> he can do it amen but, uh, I did, uh, the last thing in there that I didn't say and I give it to him and he can preach it and he can use I say God signed it because anytime God give you a blessing he always signs it because he signed it with his name because he told Moses I am that I am amen <laughs> So I didn't want to, I said I was just going to give you three because I didn't want to hold you too much longer. <laughs> amen. But I just thank God, amen, for the work, amen, that uh, Dr. Harrison has done here and abroad. And we pray God's continued blessing upon him to continue to work the work that he has sent him to do. And amen. Um, <clears throat> again, to my wife, thank God for her. Amen for coming and being there. She, uh, baby, if this ain't confirmation for you, I don't know what will be. Amen. Because he didn't confirm that she didn't have that, that people done told her. I don't think this is the first time Dr. Harrison done told her. Amen. But she, she ought to do it. She write everything else so she could sit down and write a song. Amen. But the Lord has blessed her and gifted her. So you know what? I always want her to use her gift that God has given to her. Amen. Even though it may, amen, MC, it does. It puts pressure on me. But amen. But I thank God for her because, amen, she is a blessing to the kingdom herself. Amen. And all of you, all of you, whether you know it or not, you're a blessing to the kingdom. God has work for you to do. Also, it's just not for the pastor. It's just not for the preacher. But it's for all of us. Amen. We all have, have work to do in it. Amen. Again, good brother Smith. Amen. Good to see you. Glad that you was here. Amen. Thank you, my Lord, for allowing me to be here. Amen. With you. Amen. <laughs> Your wife kept the secret well. See, I told her. See what happened is I should have told should have told some of them at the church. Look, don't y'all don't y'all let the cat out the bag now because it's supposed to be a surprise. But that's all right. And then, but I know. He, as well as I am, will be glad when we can get back there in the service. We can see all the members come back in. But we got to practice being safe. So that's the reason why I said I had to tell, I'm telling them all, look, wear your mask, wear gloves, do whatever you need to do. But you need to be back in the house of the Lord. You know what? Because, um, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to go, because at first I was a little upset with a lot of people you know, with Christians when it first started because my thing was, I said, now, y'all the same folk that used to jump up and always say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> I told them, I said, y'all the same folk that used to talk about what the three Hebrew boys said. God is able to deliver me, but even if he doesn't, he's still able. I said, y'all were the same ones. I told the church, y'all the same ones. I said, y'all the same ones that got up proclaiming that I walk by faith and not by sight. I told him, but you know what? I, I had to pray about it, and I told the Lord, you know what? We still got to be safe. We got to have good sense. Amen. We have to have good sense. Amen. And then even now, I want you to know that we have to continue to tell people because all with, all with nationality, we are the ones who are dying from it the most and is affecting us the most. I don't know why everything affects us worse than anybody else. I don't know. You know, but anyway. In the midst of it all, if it, if it affects us worse than anybody else, that means God is watching over us more than anybody else. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then let us be in prayer for all these states that's experiencing the rioting that's going on. You know, it's one thing to have a peaceful protest. It's another thing when the protest becomes violent. Amen. And others are starting to lose their life in the process. And then this is not going to help the healing. It's going to only add fuel to the fire for the problem. At some point, we got to learn how to, we got to learn how to do it in a peaceful manner. And I, I will say this, I don't condone it, don't like it, but when the lesbian and gay community wanted to have same-sex marriage, you know what they did? They got together, rallied, and marched on Washington. And you know what, they got it done. And here it is, the church, we sit around, we sit back. Even the leaders of all the conventions and all of these things, 
instead of them getting out at the forefront to go and try to curb some of this stuff and let's see if we can exact a change in some kind of way, they are just sitting back on their hands and we got to do better. We got to do much more than what we're doing. It's more than just getting together in service because you know what? The ministry and the real work is outside of these stained glasses. That's where the weird, real work goes on and takes place. So I'm going to be in prayer. Me and some more preachers have been talking. We've been getting together and we're trying to organize something where we can get together and see what we can do to help curb some of this stuff. Amen. Because we got to wake our people up. Amen. We can't let this continue to happen, but we got to find a way to do it where we can reach them. Amen. And when we can get our white brothers and sisters to get with us, amen, because that's, that's the problem. They the ones who got the problem. Because they're the ones who have perpetuated the hatred in their hearts for us. Amen. So we need to start at the source. And if we can get it changed at the source, we can turn it all around. Amen. So I just ask, uh, if, if it's all right with the pastor, I just ask, look, if y'all just be in agreement with us. As, amen. As we pray. Amen. That we can reach the white brothers and sisters and that it change their hearts and their mind. Amen. Because we ain't no third class citizens. Amen. We first class citizens just like they are. Amen. But that's all. Amen. I ain't, ain't going to turn this into a rally. But come on. <laughs> come on. Let's stand. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord God Almighty, we're just so thankful unto you for this day what you have made. Because you told us this is the day that you have made. You told us, you instructed us to rejoice in it and be glad. And Lord, we're not going to let anything or anybody discourage us. We're not going to let anything or anybody uh, take away from this day. And Lord God, we're going to allow your spirit to saturate our hearts and our minds and fill us and continue to lead and guide us. And Lord God, as we have celebrated your man of God and woman of God on today with this great church, amen, this great man of God, great woman of God, Lord, we ask your continuous blessings upon them. And all of the things that they don't even know that's coming, let them just say when they get it, this is an unexpected blessing. But Lord God, you are good at passing us and bringing us that which is unexpected to us. And Lord God, we just pray even for the church family that when they receive their blessing that they say it was an unexpected blessing. But Lord God, we know that you will bless us at your time when you are ready and we are in position to really receive it. And Lord God, as we come now, we pray your strength upon them. We pray that this church will continue to be a light in this community. We pray that they can, that they can do everything and reach everybody that you have placed in your scope for them to reach. And Lord God, we do pray for Greater Pleasant Valley and for the, that church family and for what you have placed in our hands to do there and other churches that you have opening up in your name, Lord. And we pray that we can galvanize and come together as a church family and we can, as the children of God, that Lord, and that we can exact the change in this world. And Lord God, we will forever praise you for all that you have done. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your shackles being, being our shackles being loose and we being set free. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done. And now, Lord, we just pray that uh, all that we have seen, all that we have heard, all that have entered into our hearts, Lord God, we just pray that you would just let it resonate on the inside of us and let us continue to be rejoicing on today. And Lord God, we just pray now that if we make ready to leave from this place but never from your presence, we ask that you give us your traveling grace as we go back up and down the dangerous highways and the byways. Keep us safe from any hurt, harm, and any danger. And Lord, we'll be careful now to give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. We ask that all in the powerful and prolific and pure and pass over lamb name of Jesus who he is and all of God's children let's say it together amen amen go in peace this is your mother It's your anniversary, 
anniversary. In honor of the late Sandra Miller, Dr. and Mother Harrison, we would like to wish you a happy anniversary. God bless. Happy anniversary. Give an honor to God and to our honorary. Congratulations on your 13th anniversary. We are all ambassadors for Christ, but most especially Dr. Harrison, you represent Christ in the affairs of the kingdom on earth. Mother Harrison, you are Proverbs 31. Again, Dr. Harrison, you found a good thing. From my family, we love you all. Last and not least, I also look to, to our honorees, honorees as a son and a daughter. May God bless you and keep you. I just want to say thank you to Pastor Harrison for everything that he's done throughout my entire life. Every time that I come to visit the church, he's made a strong conscious effort in remembering anything that I've done throughout my life. And I think that's warm and welcome. And happy anniversary. Good morning, Pastor Harrison, Mother Harrison. From Frankie and Lisa Hunt, we'd like to wish you a happy 13th anniversary. We love you. Good morning, Pastor Harrison and Mother Harrison. I would like to say happy 13th year anniversary from the Jackson and McCoy family. Happy, happy anniversary, Pastor and Mrs. Harrison from, from Diane and Christina. Pastor Harrison, this is your friend and brother in Christ Jesus, Albert Hunt, saying congratulations on your upcoming anniversary, and I pray you have many more. God bless you and your family. To our pastor, Pastor Harrison, we would like to wish you a happy 13th year anniversary. You have inspired us by being at Mount Holly Baptist Church for these many years. We appreciate you and we hope the best in the future. Congratulations, Pastor Harrison and Mother Harrison on your 13th year anniversary. Thank you. 